looks like we are rolling. All right, so hello, hello, good people. My name is Junior and welcome to the Daily Digital Design Show. Uh, today, we wanna talk about cryptocurrency. Uh, I think a lot of people have heard about cryptocurrency. Some may not have, but if you haven't heard of cryptocurrency, you've probably heard about Bitcoin. And I think between the two, there is a bit of confusion on exactly what it is um, and what you can actually do with it. Since it is kind of a new technology, um, only about 10 years old, and a lot of people haven't really been using it um, for what I feel like its actual purpose has been, except for you know in the past year maybe. So yeah, today it's gonna be all about cryptocurrency. Uh, maybe a bit of a longer episode than usually, but there is a lot to cover. So let's jump right into it. So cryptocurrency, um, as I've mentioned, a lot of people who haven't heard of cryptocurrency probably has heard of Bitcoin. Um, that's because Bitcoin is really like the largest cryptocurrency out there. Uh, I think it came out like in 2009, I want to say. And it's only been, you know, kind of going mainstream uh, for really the past two, three, maybe four years or something like that. Um, and in, in the past year, a lot of these other altcoins um, or coins that are just basically not Bitcoin uh, has been coming out as well. So in short, for cryptocurrency, um, every Bitcoin out there is considered a cryptocurrency, but not every cryptocurrency is just Bitcoin. Uh, like I said, Bitcoin is really just the largest one that is out there. So what exactly is cryptocurrency? Uh, well, it's just that. It's just a form of currency, a medium of exchange. Just like uh, if you're in the US, you have the dollar. Um, I think in Mexico, it's the peso, China, it's the yen. Uh, it's really just a form of currency that you can use to lend, borrow, um, that you can buy stuff with, and that you can you know, sell as well. And that is because just like gold and silver, cryptocurrency actually stores value. So the value of, let's say, a Bitcoin uh, way back when, like, I don't know, let's say 2013 or 2014 or something like that, may have been like about a dollar two dollars i'm not sure the exact numbers but just to say for example it may have been like a dollar two dollars back in 2013 now we're in 2022 where the bitcoin is actually like sixty thousand us dollars so in comparison uh, i think right now gold may be somewhere around like twenty thousand or something like that uh for every like one gold ounce that you have again don't quote me on those actual numbers I don't have the stat right in front of me but I'm just kind of giving you an example of how Bitcoin, um, as well as other cryptocurrencies, actually store some sort of value inside of it. But with cryptocurrency, it's all digital. So it's all basically like inside of the computer. And that is because cryptocurrency is basically based off of binary data. Uh, so just little bits and pieces of code um, that is binary, zeros and ones. So if you think about like the matrix, you have you know a bunch of zeros and ones, uh, numbers that are just you know going across the screen doesn't look exactly like that, just like the matrix, but in the same sense, um, that's kind of how cryptocurrency works. And those uh, binary data are considered its serial number. So every uh, cryptocurrency out there, including Bitcoin, has its own serial number that gets used to identify what exactly the coin is and how it can be used. Cryptocurrency has many different forms. Um, there's many different uh, intentions for cryptocurrency, especially now with the rise of like the Web3, with the rise of NFTs and stuff like that. Cryptocurrency has really been exploding in the past years. And I think we're really going to see what it can actually be um, this year, 2022, 2023. All right. And so there are like two main things that you can do with cryptocurrency. The first one being uh, investing in it. So again, you can buy and sell cryptocurrency. Um, let me ask you a question. When's the last time you bought, if you're in the US again, if, when's the last time you bought a dollar? You probably <laughs> never bought a dollar, right? The dollar is used to actually buy other stuff, stuff that you want or need. Um, so why exactly would you buy a dollar? Well, again, cryptocurrency is more like gold and silver. People actually do buy gold. Why? Because it has that uh, value stored inside of it. So with cryptocurrency like Bitcoin, people have bought it and they've held it for years and years. And now those cryptocurrency, those Bitcoins um, has increased in value. And now they're worth, you know, like I said, Bitcoin is like $60,000. So if you bought 10 of them at $1, you literally have like 
$600,000 now just sitting you know, in your crypto wallet. So that's number one thing that most people have been doing with cryptocurrency um, is just investing in it. They've been buying it and then they've been you know, holding on to it and then selling it or they've been doing what we call trading, uh, which is pretty much just you know, buying it at say 12 o'clock in the afternoon and you watch the price until it goes up above a certain number that you want to you know, sell it at. Um, and then you can sell it that same day. You can sell it the next day. You know, just kind of watch the market, see how the market changes, um, and then kind of go from there. The other thing that you can do for it with it uh, is actually use it as a form of currency. It's, again, like I said, it's called cryptocurrency for a reason. Um, and you can use it to buy and sell stuff. I think so. I think the first time that I've really witnessed um, cryptocurrency being used is when Domino's Pizza um, allowed someone to use Bitcoin to purchase a whole pizza pie. Uh, back then, you know, Bitcoin was, I don't know, pennies on a dollar, really. So using that wasn't really that much. And so the reason why it could be used uh, in that way is because Bitcoin and um, other cryptocurrencies are all fungible. Fungible just meaning that um, they can be divided up into smaller pieces. So again, uh, if you had a gold brick or something like that, that's not really all that fungible. Um, but if you have the dollar, the dollar can be exchanged for coins. Uh, for example, one dollar equals four quarters, uh, 10 dimes, 20 nickels, 100 pennies or whatnot. So you can take that Bitcoin and actually break it down into smaller chunks so they can be used for different uh, reasons. So when you're investing in it, don't ever think you have to buy a whole Bitcoin. So if you don't have $60,000 laying around for a whole Bitcoin, that's perfectly fine, no big deal, because you can spend you know, $100 and buy some Bitcoin and just you know keep spending $100 once a month or something like that until you get up to the point where you have um, a whole lot of you know bitcoins out there and then when you do go in and purchase some bitcoin or any cryptocurrency you'll need to add it to your crypto wallet so this is again all digital um, it's a digital wallet that you can either keep on your cell phone uh, or on your actual computer uh, one thing about those is that they have two different um, keys on it one is a public key and one is a secret key just make sure that if you are using the Secret key, keep it secret. <laughs> That's the reason why it's called secret key, uh, because it's only for you to know. If you're using the public key, though, you can use the public key to give to other people if they want to transfer cryptocurrency to you, uh, or if you, you know, was looking to like buy some buy something with it. Um, you can use your public key out there, um, and then also your wallet doesn't have to stay on the computer. The safest wallet, I believe. Um, are those soft wallets they're called so it's just like a paper wallet like you have your um crypto wallet password written on a piece of paper stored in a safe someplace so nobody can ever get it nobody can ever touch it uh, but they also have hardware wallets like the um uh, the trezor that's out there now you can use and they also um have different encryption you know services or whatever to make sure that your wallet that's on the computer stays um, safe as well um but that's a whole you know separate thing keeping your wallet safe making sure your cryptocurrency uh, doesn't get hacked and all that stuff and you can uh, buy all of these cryptocurrencies well not all of them um, majority of the main cryptocurrencies out there you can buy directly from the exchanges um, and there are different exchanges out there um, coinbase being one uh, gemini being one i think crypto.com on your cell phone could be one uh, robin hood the um the app also allows you to exchange cryptocurrency uh, cash app as well you can buy cryptocurrency as, on there as well um, i personally don't feel comfortable doing that but that's a whole again whole separate thing there um, but it's you know perfectly doable if you trust cash app and you want to purchase some cryptocurrency get into it you can personally uh, you can purchase it directly from there and then once you make these purchases um, everything gets stored on the ledger again don't worry um, you're completely safe with everything being on the ledger uh, it's a public ledger that people can see and what the ledger basically is is a data record keeping um, service or system um, and it's all basically computerized so with these ledgers um, again they're all public so every transaction is seen on the ledger but your information is not seen so um, your crypto public key is a bunch of like I think it's like 14 or 16 I think it's like 14 or 16 digits so it's like numbers and letters that you have to not you personally have to remember but that you have to type in whenever you want to you know purchase something so that's the only thing that is actually visible on these ledgers uh nothing will be attached to you per se your name identification all that stuff will still be secured but with the ledger the ledger is um, mainly for three main things 
Uh, the first one being is to control uh, what coins are being created. So there's a thing also called mining. Once the creator of a coin goes out there and you know makes a brand new coin, um, they can allow people to mine it. Just like people go out, you know, to um, I guess it's called coal mines and mine coal uh, or gold mines and mine gold. Um, you will go into the computer and basically solve some cryptographic equation um, that'll basically put new coins into circulation. Um, so with cryptocurrency, the thing called market cap, which is like the you know total amount of coins that were actually created for said coin uh, inside of the code, but the codes are not available yet. Um, it takes a lot of computing power in order to mine all of these cryptocurrencies. So people all around the world are basically tasked to mine some of this cryptocurrency. And if you become a miner, you actually get paid for it. So if you want to mine Bitcoin, I'm not sure how profitable it is now, uh, but if you want to mine Bitcoin, you truly can and you would actually get paid in cryptocurrency. Um, well, you get get paid in Bitcoin to actually mine this coin. All right. And then the next thing uh, that the ledger is used for is to secure transaction records. Like I said, when you make a purchase or something like that, transaction is placed on the blockchain. Blockchain is being a distributed ledger, uh, which is, a, you know, a public financial transaction uh, database. Um, but once it's on there, somebody needs to verify that it actually happened. Um, if a tree falls in the forest, is anybody and nobody's around to hear it? Does it actually happen? Well, yeah, technically. But <laughs> with the ledger, um, if you make a transaction and it goes through to somebody else, probably about 10,000 people around the world are verifying that, hey, this transaction is real. This transaction is actually happening. Um, this way, it allows you to bypass the middleman. You don't have to go to a bank and let the bank, you know, you know, give the money to the bank and then the bank has a transfer to so and so. You can directly give your money or give your cryptocurrency to whoever you want to. And then it's just, you know, people in between the line uh, that are just verifying that it is an actual transaction. It's not being stolen or anything like that. And that's actually kind of part of the third thing that cryptocurrency is used for is just to verify the transfer of um, said coins. All right. Uh, and when you are um, transferring cryptocurrency, uh, well, mainly I think it's for when you're actually buying something. So like for example, um, our episode on NFTs, um, you can buy some form of digital art on one of the marketplaces like OpenSea or Rarible. And when you do that, you have to pay something called gas. So just like uh, if you had a car and you want to go from point A to point P, you had to put gas in your car. Unless you're fortunate enough to have a Tesla, then you don't have to really worry about gas, but you do have to worry about a form of electricity to power that car. Uh, like I said before, to mine cryptocurrency, it takes a lot of computing power just as much as it takes um, to transfer coins across you know, the whole entire world. So you have to pay what they call gas fees in order to um, make that transaction happen. Um, and those fees are usually in GWEIs, um, G-W-E-I, I believe it is. Um, and you can you know, check online. There's a bunch of different websites out there where you can see how much GUI is um, set for gas right now. I think Ethereum is the main one. Uh, you have to worry about as far as like gas fees and stuff like that but other coins as well um, for different transaction has gas as well all right so just to do a quick little recap um cryptocurrency I, I really i feel like we've been using some form of cryptocurrency for years now um and the reason why i say that is because like credit cards uh paypal uh cash app venmo zelle all of those are a form of like digital currency where you put your money on an app like Cash App um, or Zelle, you put your money on there, um, and then from there, you just you just use that, and you don't have to actually um, transfer any physical cash or anything like that. So it's a form of digital currency that we've been using for years. On a credit card, we've been using for years. Everything is cashless. So with cryptocurrency, um, cryptocurrency just really takes away the middleman. So you no longer need a bank to make a transfer. You no longer need a bank to do really anything once you have your cryptocurrency. So you also don't need to have um, a, a good credit score. If you want to uh, borrow money or something like that, you can borrow cryptocurrency without having to, you know, show that you have a good credit score or whatever. And you also don't need to identify yourself. Your identification is just your public key. Those numbers and letters that say, hey, this is my wallet address. I actually do own this. That's all you need to know. You know, with this, uh, I feel like opens the door really to a decentralized system instead of a system that is completely centralized where everything goes to, you know, the middleman basically, and then it gets distributed out to 
you know, the regular people, uh, the people that use it every single day. We now um, gain control of our funds. We now gain control of our finances. Uh, we have complete ownership of everything. Uh, and we don't need, you know, the bank or anybody else telling us what we can or cannot do uh, with our own cash or crypto, I should say. All right, so if you've been thinking about, you know, kind of getting more into cryptocurrency, um, really there is nothing to fear with it. All you have to really do, uh, like I said, is go to just one of the exchanges, uh, look at a couple of them, really do your research on which ones that are the most trusted ones. Usually the most trusted ones are the ones on the exchanges already. Some of the ones that are just popping up brand new, they haven't made onto the exchanges uh, because nobody really knows about them. But uh, ones like Dogecoin, um, there's Cardano, there's Solana, all those ones um, are pretty, a pretty safe bet, pretty safe investment so that you know the project is going to be ongoing and it would be a good investment. And like I said, you don't have to just invest in a cryptocurrency and you know trade it later on or sell it later on. Um, it may just be a brand new form of buying stuff in the future. So we won't have, it'll be a true you know cashless society now where we can go to the grocery store and just use cryptocurrency. Uh, I just recently heard that Airbnb, um, Airbnb is now actually starting to think about adding cryptocurrency abilities to their website so that if I wanted to go rent an Airbnb from somebody, I can do so with no problem and use crypto. Um, and then, you know, the Airbnb holders, the, you know, holders of the units, they will actually be able to get paid in crypto as well, uh, which is really a good thing. For example, if you, got paid in cryptocurrency when it was $50,000 and now you just held on to that cryptocurrency and now it's worth $60,000. Well, you just made $10,000 just by holding cryptocurrency. Um, it is it's literally just like that. You can really get paid in this cryptocurrency and make money just by keeping it because it is a, a store of value. So yeah, if you guys have any further questions um, about what cryptocurrency is, how it works or anything like that, please feel free to, again, do your own research or just hit me up on any of these social media channels. My handle is at junior underscore eventso. And until next time, you all take care.